Hi, Lou Pulsifer here to talk about 10 need to knows about writing clear rules and game design documents if you're interested in video games. Now this is a summary. Every point I make and a lot more than the 10 I do make could be discussed at considerable length. My course for this topic is about 35,000 words long, which is more than four hours of video. I know of no book or course that covers the topic of rules writing other than mine. And I'll finish editing the book sooner or later. So we have a list of 10 things, and I'm not going to read them because I'm going to through, go through each one. Here's the rest of the list. The first one is, what would the ideal be? Well, the ideal for me as a game designer is I would conceive a game and it would just appear out of thin air and be ready to play. Another possibility would be something like the Star Trek holodeck, where the person, f for all intents and purposes, is in the world, or the Matrix, same kind of thing. Failing that, your doppelganger would magically appear to teach the gamer how to play. Or, if you have to have written rules, your doppelganger would be on an 800 phone number to answer any questions. Unfortunately, that notion, the 800 number for rule problems, is patented, which never should have happened, but it is, and the royalties are expensive, so nobody can use it. So, instead we have to write rules, or we have to write game design documents for the people who create the software, and the software then will enforce the rules. The purpose of rules is to help players play the game as you intended. One of the great advantages of video games is that the software, if it's written correctly, enforces the rules. Now, of course, we've all heard of lots of glitches in software that enable things to happen that were not intended by the game designer, so it's not as clear-cut as it might seem. If you can see, succeed with 99% of the people playing your game right after reading the rules, you're beating the odds because players are people. They forget things, sometimes conveniently. They misunderstand. Sometimes they can't separate their own desires from the intentions of the game. So there's no such thing as perfect rules writing. You can only try to come close. Uh, in these respects, rules writing most closely resembles tactical writing. Rules or, or directions about how to do things. No one, or almost no one, wants to read the rules. I'm unusual. I happen to prefer to read the rules, but I'm in a small minority, and it may be generational as well. I'm a baby boomer. So you as a designer start behind the eight ball. Nobody wants to read your rules. Try to make rules reading as painless, as unfrustrating as possible, but don't cut corners. Because if you do too much of trying to make it painless, you end up with something that's vague and people won't play the game the way you intend it to, to be played. Now, some games are quite robust and people can play it wrong and still enjoy it. Some games are not so robust and if people play it wrong, it's a mess. So the best thing is to get people to play it right. Your enemy is what's called satisficing and skimming. Satisficing, the simple definition is doing just enough to get by. More specifically, doing enough to get a satisfactory, though not optimal, result. This works well enough for some things, like buying groceries, but not for rules reading, because unfortunately everything in the rules is important or it wouldn't be there. Now, put on top of this the tendency of people nowadays to skim, to read bits of the whole. This can amount to functional illiteracy in extreme cases. The person reads, quote unquote, the document, but they don't really know what it means because they skipped so much. Given the nature of rules, everything is important, and that's not what readers are used to these days. And we'll talk about more of them in part two.